Hi, I'm gonna try to keep this intro as short as possible. This video is a bonus lesson from a massive editing and animation masterclass I made with my brother, Nathaniel Drew, called Frame by Frame. There's more info about that at the end, so if you're interested, stick around. But if not, all good, this video is a freebie for you either way. Okay, enjoy the video. Take a look at both of these composites. Personally, I prefer one of these far more than the other. The reason why? It implements an important imaging artifact from real life cameras, making the composite seem more cohesively tied together. If you haven't guessed by now, the version I prefer is the right one, and the property I'm emulating in this composite is called Bloom. Keeping it simple, Bloom occurs when a camera is pointed at a very bright light, where all the light isn't able to be perfectly focused. You've definitely seen this many times in your life whether you realize it or not. So why is it important to emulate Bloom when we're compositing bright glows? Well, if we want our scene to feel real and like everything was shot in camera, we need even the digital elements we add to follow the same rules. This means adding glow in the right order of our layer stack so that the actual bloom part shows up on top of our subject. This can more easily be explained by showing a real world example. Here I have a shot of my studio light, but it looks super overexposed. This is because the camera is metered to this ping pong paddle. Or in simple terms, I made sure the paddle was properly exposed, not the light. Watch what happens when I put the paddle in front of the studio light. Do you see the light sort of creeping around the edges of the paddle? Let's do this again, but this time I'm going to take a clip of the paddle without the light on, mask it out, and then put it on top of the light on clip. This is what it looks like. It's weird, isn't it? Something feels wrong intuitively, like the paddle is in front of a cheap green screen. And in essence, it kind of is. We combine two shots without following proper compositing rules, so naturally our eyes picked up that something is off. Let's go back to the original two shots from the beginning of this lesson, but this time I'm going to split them into 3D space so you can see the order of the layers. Take a look at the left one. We have the background layer, our glowing circle, and then the subject. But notice that the glow on the circle is getting applied before our subject, meaning no bloom is occurring. Now take a look at the right one. The background is still in the back, but in this version the subject is second, not the glowing circle. The glowing circle is at the top of the stack, but with a cutout of the subject applied first, and then glowed. This way, when we stack all the layers together again, that super pretty bloom is applied not only on our background, but over our subject as well. This is what we're going for. And this is what I'm gonna show how to do right now in After Effects. Okay, here in After Effects, I have the same layers I used in the example at the beginning of this lesson. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. Basically what I imported here is just a Photoshop file with two layers, which is the subject, which is Nathan here, and the background behind it, which is a green background. And I just separated this in Photoshop to show it easily, but this could be any image, this could be any video. And when I get to the second half of this lesson, when we talk about rotoscoping, we'll see other examples for that. But for now, we're gonna use this example to show exactly how I did it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make that circle so we can have that digital element to glow. So right clicking here, making a shape layer, and then coming up to the tool at the top, selecting the ellipse tool, and then double clicking to make our ellipse. I'm gonna delete the stroke here, just like so, and turn on the fill, just make a full white fill. And then if I hit UU really fast on the shape layer, we can see we have our size right here. And let's just set this to like 1800 by 1800, and that should be pretty good. I'm gonna rename this circle here and drop this below our subject, just like so. Now I'm gonna add some glow here and I'm gonna use optical glow, which is my personal favorite glow, but this could be any glow. This could be the default After Effects glow. For this, I think it's easiest to just show with my favorite glow, so let's add that right now and then set this to extend. So we can see we have glow on the circle coming out here on, on the outside, but there is none of that on the subject. And that's because of our layer stack. Remember, our subject is on top and the circle is below. So the circle is getting all the glow applied first and then our subject is stacking on top. And so like I showed in that 3D layer cutout example, we need to mat the circle out with our subject first and then add the glow. And so the instinct is to just use a track mat because that's what it's there for, right? So if I select this and then select our subject, it would cut this out and then if we invert it, it would be on the outside. But you can see that there's still no glow on the inside. And that's because of the order of operations that After Effects processes. And I spoke about this in the tips and tricks lesson, also in the vault, where effects are applied first and then track mats happen. And so that kind of goes against the exact effect that we need. So the workaround is to mat our circle using an effect and then glowing it. And what I mean by that is using the set matte effect first. So let's do that. I'm gonna get rid of this track matte here right now and then set our circle on top of our subject and turn our subject back on. And let's turn off the glow as well. So we're back to where we started here. What I'm gonna do here is bring up the set matte effect right here. So I'm gonna click this and drag this 
before our optical glow. And our optical glow is off, but we'll turn it back on in a second. And what I'm gonna do is set this drop down to our subject. So as soon as I click him, we'll see that we're getting some sort of shape from him, but it looks really weird and stretched. And this is because After Effects is reading the dimensions of the actual layer relative to the layer itself, not the composition. So what I mean by that is that if I make the Nathan layer here, our subject layer, the size of the comp here, and I'm hitting Control Alt F to do that, you can see that it's taking the shape of him, but as if he was stretched to the size of our comp. And obviously that's not what we want. So the workaround for this is if we undo this and we right click our subject layer and we come to pre-compose, and we make sure that the first option is selected here, the leave all attributes in glow example. So we're leaving all the attributes in our main comp. Let's just call this Nathan Pre and hit OK. Nothing happens, but what we can now do is collapse transformations. It's this button here. If we click this, you can see that it'll actually make our set map work. And this is because our layer is now being seen in the dimensions of the composition instead of the dimensions of just the layer. It's just a property of After Effects and a workaround that you kind of have to use if you want to do this effect. So if we back up here, if I just undo everything and we look right here, there's no button. You can't do it with just the layer. But if you pre-compose it and then use the collapse transformation button, just like we did, then it works just like so. And so now our circle is reading the mat from our layer perfectly. So if we move the circle around, you can see it fills in wherever we want it. But of course, it's the opposite of what we want. We want the circle to be on the outside, not the inside of the subject here. So all we need to do is just click invert mat. And there we go. We have our circle matted out on top of our subject layer here. And all we need to now do is just turn on our glow. So if I come over to the effects and just turn on our optical glow again, we can see we have that glow coming over our subject. And then all it all there is to it is just tweaking some effects and maybe some blend modes and you're good to go. So I'm gonna lower the glow to maybe something like five, increase the size to 100, and let's set the blend mode to add. And we can see that this is probably a bit too strong, maybe drop the size and the amount to like two. You know, again, it just comes down to tweaking, but the point is we now have that glow kind of creeping around the edge, which is what we want. That's the proper way to composite our glow over our subject. And again, if we look at our layer stack, it's the circle at the top, then the subject, and then our background. And what's great is it works with videos and any other layer that you can think of, not just shape layers and circles and stuff like that. So what I imported here is some fire, and I don't normally get to use fire compositing on his footage, but in this example, might as well. So what I'm gonna do here is the same process. I'm gonna right click our layer, pre-compose it, make sure leave all attributes is set to this. And then let's just call this fire pre. And then I'm gonna select the collapse transformation button right here. And we'll see that it gets all funky, but that's okay. We're gonna then add the set mat effect, just like before, make sure it's set to our subject, invert it just like so, and then add our optical glow. And we already see we have that glow kind of peeking around him. So again, I'll just tweak some of these settings, maybe set the size to 90, the amount to like three, and maybe the blend mode to like add or something like that. And boom, now we have an explosion behind him. And if I play, we can see it's rendering, but you can see that the glow is all interactive with the clip itself. So now the highlights are just around here where the hot part is. But if we back up to here, you can see all that white is kind of creeping around him with that nice glow. And again, that's really all there is to it for glow compositing. It's it's not a super complicated setup. It's just a matter of understanding set matte and how that works with other layers, as well as the order of operations that After Effects uses for effects and track mats. Okay, next I wanna get into rotoscoping, what it is, how to use it, and my- I hope this helps with your composites. If you wanna see the rest of this lesson and a ton more, including animation philosophy foundations, project breakdowns, and the entire masterclass covering everything about visual storytelling from beginning to end, there's gonna be a link in the description to learn more. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.